welcome everyone to another Thursday evening live stream. Bitcoin is really toying with the idea of smashing those all time highs lately. Uh, so volatility, ugh, getting tongue tied here. So volatility has been heating up recently. As always, I will start out zoomed out uh, to the weekly time frame here and basically just uh, get a feel for the overall market and work my way into my more <laughs> my personal favorite the more degen time frames getting into the shorter time frames and uh maybe even find some uh we'll take uh, some scalping opportunities maybe we're gonna take a look at some of my favorite indicators and uh all that sort of stuff so with that let's hop on over to the weekly chart here i'm still feeling great about this chart i really can't help but feel like we are going to get some sort of a crazy breakout in the next couple of weeks um, obviously we are still at resistance here so um, I mean, take it for what it is. We're, uh, don't get silly yet. Obviously, we haven't had the breakout yet. It's not confirmed. Uh, just the way everything is looking, if we can get a weekly candle close above this red line, so that would be basically just above these candle bodies here, I really think that's going to be a big green flag for uh, Bitcoin to go a little nuts. On top of that, you can see we're just kind of squeezing, right? We have that horizontal resistance. We have this upward sloping diagonal support. If we do lose this white line, especially since we've had three exact touch points already, which that's kind of something with my criteria to consider a, a trend line valid for a breakout, is I generally like to see three exact touch points, especially with diagonal trend lines, just because, you know, uh, diagonal trend lines just aren't quite as reliable as horizontal levels and that kind of thing. So I really like to have three exact touch points before a breakout. So if we do happen to lose that support, Yes, we absolutely have to consider the possibility that we're going to see further downside, maybe something like that, retest it from the bottom side and then uh, nuke a little bit. The good news is that Bitcoin, and I don't know I say this uh, every week, Bitcoin has done a great job building support on the way up. Uh, currently, the horizontal support I'm looking at is this green box here. Uh, we have these other levels where we obviously spent some time as well. So there is a lot of good support for Bitcoin, in my opinion. Um, if we lose this green box, um, that's where I'm going to be a little bit more concerned and where we could actually see a crazy dump. Um, I think it would take some sort of weird black swan event, some sort of global event, but, uh, we're going to have to see uh, anything is possible. But if we lose that higher low of that green box, that's where I'm kind of looking at, Hey, you know, we might be coming back to the bottom of this range or specifically these Stuber fibs. I know that sounds ridiculous, and I also don't think it's going to happen, but I, I just want it on my radar just in case, because typically speaking, if this was any other time frame, we lose that structure. Uh, that's what I look for. Um, you know, I look for that pullback to the 786, if not even further. So, uh, you know, chart structure generally works the same. Uh, longer time frames, shorter time frames. Uh, just obviously they take longer to play out or whatever. Uh, but that is something to consider because, um, well, something interesting about this right now is since we got closes above this yellow line here. Um, so that's basically, you guys know, those of you who have been in many of my streams in the past, you know how I kind of look for those Stuber setups, right? I mean, in this case, I would have a high. Hey, we got a higher high here. Technically, the higher low, as far as that goes, means that we just confirmed this as our higher low. So technically, I mean, yes, I'm looking at this green box of the higher low of this trend, but on a macro time frame, uh, technically, we could just be in this massive range, right? Um, so after cle uh, clearing the highs like this, generally speaking, that's a breakout thing on a longer time frame with Bitcoin. That's what it generally does. Once you start clearing those weekly all-time high resistance levels, it's only a matter of time until the market gets absolutely stupid, buy high, sell higher kind of a thing. Um, but as it stands right now, if this was a shorter time frame, I would be looking for that pullback to these levels. So just something to consider. However, that being said, we get a much different uh, situation if we do start closing above this red uh, resistance line here. Um, let me just clean things up a little bit. I just want to get rid of that, get rid of that. I'll get rid of that fib. Um, yeah, so basically as it stands right now, we did get that higher high, but 
as far as a macro trend, that's just confirming this as the higher low, right? So, but this is where things get interesting, you guys. We start closing above this, uh, this red line. That's when we've now set a new higher high, and that drastically changes the uh, the shape of the macro chart, right? Because that would actually bring our higher low up to this level. So um, basically from 15,000 up to 56,000. Um, so not that I think that's necessarily relevant because like I said, I really see no reason why we would pull all the way back towards the bottom of this market cycle. Um, but just as far as basic structure goes and how I look at ranges when I play them and playing breakouts and stuff, um, that's what I want to see. And I think that would just be a green light for a much tighter invalidation on a massive scale. Um, so that's just something that I want to consider. You know, uh, that's why I'm going to be very interested in the charts Sunday evenings, uh, looking at that weekly close. That's 6 p.m. my time. Um, I'm, I'm going to be watching that because I think if we get a if we get a weekly close above this uh, resistance here, I, I think it's a big green light for Bitcoin to do silly things. Um, obviously, anything can happen. And, you know, we all of a sudden get that pump up here and all of a sudden we lose this yellow line again. Well, then we have to consider the fact that, you know, it might flip into resistance again and whatever. Go from there. Play the charts as it comes. Right. It, it's so much more important to be able to react than predict but it's nice to predict things just as you know things to watch out for just so you are ready when the time comes right um let's look at a couple of indicators as i love to look at um nothing has really changed on this you can see that the buy trend on the weekly here on my trend collection indicator um still looking like beautiful support it's actually climbing out of this green box now um so for about a month now this indicator has been a green with my uh, green support box here and now it's actually climbing a little higher so great to see that um, as well, we still have a whole bunch of these reversal warnings, these little yellow W's. They're still all trending to the upside as well. So as far as a macro trend goes, things look absolutely beautiful there, in my opinion. Um, let's zoom right into some shorter time frames here. Um, let's check out the hourly here. Um, something that's a little bit concerning Let's actually just get rid of the wicks because like I said, it's so much easier to see chart structure. I mean, this is all messy, right? But if we get rid of those wicks, um, it's just a little bit easier to see. That kind of what I was looking for is let's say we have a high here. Um, whether we want to consider this a higher high and this a higher high. I mean, after we broke that, um, that would I, I can already tell you there's a beautiful Stuber Fib set up there. Um, just pulling it from the top. Oops from where we bottomed out to there. And yeah, look where we got that reversal. <laughs> Bang on, right? Um, you just start to see that so often all over the time, but that's waiting for that little bit of a structure break, then the pullback, right? Um, but even if you just, you know, you don't want to microanalyze that far, let's say this is a high, higher high, higher low, um, you can see that we have recently lost that level as well. So something to consider is that we might see another uh, little pullback. Let's say if we wanted to take another Fib pull, uh, just something to watch for uh, in the evening is uh, this might be a little bit of trouble for Bitcoin going ahead um, as well. <laughs> actually, you know how I just had that smaller Stuber Fib uh, laid out there? Actually here, I can just redo that. Um, that is what it was. And you guys uh, understand what I'm getting at there. Hey, like after we lost this level, basically just a change in structure. And then we get that bounce, turn the wicks back on. We pull right into my Fibonacci pocket. On top of that for additional confluence, which would have been a nice little scalp for the short side, is uh, we also had the reversal warnings flip directions, right? We all of a sudden set a lower high W there, right in the fib pocket. So beautiful confirmation there. Uh, the only thing is that may have played out, right? Because now the indicator is giving us another warning to the upside. So not saying it has to hold at this point. We have a little bit of conflicting stories because these are trending to the downside and the bottom ones are technically trading, they're trending to the upside. So mixed signals there. 
Uh, but there was this nice little warning and as well uh, on the other side getting a nice little warning. So if you were looking at that as a bit of a scalp, um, you'd probably be at least looking at closing a good chunk of the position, right? Because, um, yeah, well, a good, well, the move has played out. I mean, the way that I personally play a Stuber Fib like that, my TP, my entry would have been laddered in. I would have got one, two entries, basically perfect. And then uh, TP1, TP2, and I would just have the rest of my position, about half my position left just running. That's just how I like to play them. Definitely not financial advice uh, because everybody has different ways they trade and that sort of thing. But that's just uh, looking at it as a typical uh, Stuber Fib setup, basically. Um... Oh, just getting a little bit of noise. I'm just going to do a little mutey mute. Uh, let me know if, if I end up muting anybody because of background noise or anything and you do want to talk on the mic at any time, by all means, just let me know in the chat and I can unmute people or whatever. Um, <laughs> if Biden wins the election, we might get that black swan event. Hey, you never, <laughs> you never know, right? Um, that's another kind of funny thing is a lot of times like Bitcoin, I mean, you guys know with the halving cycle, generally a four-year cycle elections are also on a four-year cycle so all that stuff kind of lines up together and generally speaking around election time you know governments want to spend money and buy votes so all that extra money coming in and uh, that's good for the markets too right so just another reason why i think bitcoin is going to get a little silly later in the year obviously when i'm looking at a weekly time frame like this it takes a while to play out right uh, this whole time, ever since we broke above this green box, I've been very vocally bullish on this channel and um, <clears throat> nothing's changed. I, I saw people flipping from uh, $200,000 targets to uh, bear market on and just flip flopping very quickly. And the whole time I was just thinking this, we're just trading sideways a little bit on a weekly chart. Nothing crazy has happened. We haven't lost a higher low structure. Nothing bad has happened in the chart yet that would uh, make me think that this bull market is over. <laughs> so I don't know. I I'm very bullish here and it it's just having patience at this level, right? Yeah, it's taking a while. Last market cycle, we traded at all time highs for around five weeks. This time we're looking at more like three months, somewhere in there. But generally speaking, market cycles slow down and that sort of thing as well. And there's more money in the market, there's ETFs, there's all this thing where bigger uh, players are in the market, so things just slow down, right? Uh, Bitcoin has slowed down drastically compared to when I got involved with it, when we used to see it move 40% a day on a regular basis. Um, things are just a little different now. There's a lot more money involved, so... Uh, yeah, basically it'll take a while to play out, but I really think any week now Bitcoin, like I said, watch that red line around 71.5. I think if we get a weekly close above that, I think it's going to be a um, <laughs> new stage of the bear or the bull market on, so to speak. Um, looking at Bitcoin, let's go back to the five minute chart here. Oh, that little uh, order block that I had mentioned here. Oh, never quite got myself there. Got a little bit of wiggle room yet. But yeah, as far as not, as soon as I take off the wicks, look at that. We're just holding that box absolutely perfectly so far. So I'm hoping the price can stay above that at this point. So that my long can continue here. Really, um, in this box, in my opinion, not a bad place to take along because then you do have such a tight invalidation as far as a scalp goes, right? Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to catch a little more of this on stream with you guys here. Really hoping to see this pump. That would be just lovely. Um, let's take a look at some of the indicators on the shorter time frame here. Uh, down here, stable coin indicator. We recently had a bearish hidden, a hidden bearish divergence. It never really did much. Um, so I'm going to consider it invalid at this point. Um, trend collection and trend dynamic. Uh, what do we got going on here? Well, we do have this buy signal. What I don't like about this buy signal on the trend collection is because it's lower than the previous one. 
Uh, that's one way that I really like to use the indicators is just to kind of see which way they are trending, right? It's not every individual signal. Uh, it is nice that this one lines up with some structure as well. That's always good to see. Uh, but what I do like to use indicators for is just noticing the trends, just like what I was talking about uh, earlier with the trending W's and stuff like that, right? Um, as far as W's go, uh, they are also trending to the downside still. But yeah, as long as we can hold this green box, I'll hold on to that little bit of a long position. Uh, I am going to... Oh, actually, what else? Uh, auto charting tools, what do we got going on here? Uh, those look like random points but until you bring up the wicks there. Uh, so those as well, uh, this indicator showing lower lows. Um, actually, I want to check something. So sometimes what I like to do is also uh, use these points on the auto charting tools indicator is quite often I will use these for pulling my fibs from. Uh, for example, I think even though the trend carried to the downside, I think you would have had a beautiful Stuber uh, fib set up off that level, right? Yeah, even though it's a small range, if that's the fib you're pulling, then taking profits should be the same, right? But entering on the 786, TP1, TP2, boom. Uh, just off one of those signals there. Um, and as well, looking for the reversal here. <clears throat> Since we have this lower low and this lower low, you could technically, uh, one thing I would like to do in that case is pull a fib like this. I feel like I already... I'm not as interested in shorting right now either, but this is just something to look for moving forward. Uh, since this is a lower low and a lower low, uh, just pulling my fib from the highest point between the two and doing this sort of a thing. And although we never reached the super fib pocket, we sure got damn close. And uh, also with a reversal warning at that level. So that might not have been such a short or such a bad short opportunity. Like I said, I'm not really interested in shorting as much as I am interested in longing these days. Um, <clears throat> I still do take the odd short scalp. It's just I'm I'm more aggressively seeking longs. And being that we have this little bit of structure forming, um, until we lose this, I'm just not really interested in shorting. Um... I want to look at some other stuff, but I also want to babysit my trade. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Oh, nice little green candle close. Whatever. Let's check out other stuff. <laughs> I did mention that I wanted to take a look at Ethereum. Um, something that's awesome is, well, you can see, I just talked to you guys before the stream here. Um, someone who has been in my mentorship for a little bit actually pointed this out to me yesterday, and I took his trade, actually. Um, he pointed out that we had pulled back you know, we had this high here, higher high, higher, higher low. So we pulled a fib there and yeah, sent me the message right as we were trading at the 786, asked what I thought about it. And I, th I said I would take that every time that I see it. <laughs> it just looked absolutely beautiful. Um, TP1, TP2, and then it dumped, right? So generally speaking, after TP2, I'm for surely setting my uh, stop loss at break even anyways. Uh, because at the end of the day, playing the range until it breaks. I'm never entering a position like this hoping it's, well, no, I'm always hoping it's a home run, but I'm not banking on it being a home run, right? So um, basically treating every trade, uh, basically the first half of my position, I'm always trading the range and then hoping for a breakout with the other half of the position, basically. So um, yeah, we got the beautiful range play there. We never got the breakout, so it is what it is. But beautiful trade setup um, pointed out by him. Um, what do we got going on here? I'll turn off the wicks here just so it's a little easier to see. I do like that we, you know, as far as really looking into a five-minute chart here, we had this low, lower low, that's our lower high, lower low, lower high. So the fact that we broke that level, that was basically um, our signal that things could be reversing to the upside, right? So uh, even on this little trend here, just looking at the 
the current level I'd be looking at basically and again this is very micro analyzing but uh, as long as that holds things look pretty good there if not we might see some sort of a pullback right like when I'm looking for a typical Stuber Fib setup again no financial advice but one of my favorite strategies is um, just being this is trending to the upside yes you can look for that tight invalidation level um, what I typically like doing is looking for that pullback, right? Because since we did break that level, that's where I start pulling my fibs. So basically I'd pull a fib from the very bottom wick up to where we're topped out right now. And this is going to change, right? If the price goes up, this will change. But as it stands right now, I'd be looking for the pullback towards the 786886. If the price ends up pumping higher and I just basically follow it and I'm still looking, I mean, again, you can play ranges inside ranges and you can look for continuations and that sort of thing. That's totally fine. But as far as the Stuber setup, that's where I'd be looking for, you know, just basically chasing the price with the fib and looking for that pullback to that level. Just another uh, opportunity to look forward to kind of a thing, right? Um, but as far as this little trend goes on the five minute, I like what I see here. It would actually, even if we break this little box, I know this is micro analyzing you guys, but this is um, this is very active type of trading when we're looking at this type of structure, right? Um, but yeah, basically, if we close above this, I mean that's a good sign, just because it would be. There's not actually a structure break here yet, but even the fact that we traded down, set this little low, lower, low, lower, high. Again, very micro analyzing on something like that, but just kind of how I look at structure, right? Oops, I, I'm more so interested in this box here just because this is basically the, <laughs> to really micro break this down for you guys, just to explain what happened here, is although we are just kind of consolidating like this, this is where the price kind of pulled back and found strong support because it then b blasted us through this resistance, right? So that's the level that I'm looking at holding as strong support and beautiful to see that we did come right back down to that level, retest it. If I turn on the wicks, uh, barely even wicked into it. So nice to see some sort of a reaction there. Um, ooh, Biddy's, uh, Biddy's having a hard time holding that box here. Might get stopped out here. I don't like that it's hugging that so much. But that's okay. It's in a profit anyways. ETH, I'm tempted to take a little swing. I think I will put in a little position just with a, a stop loss real tight down here. Um, just hoping for a tight invalidation continuation kind of a thing. Um, very okay with it getting stopped out if it happens. Um, this is really micro analyzing, guys. <laughs> just so you know, this is not looking for a swing opportunity, this is just a tight invalidation either it continues or it doesn't kind of a thing oh, my long is still bitcoin still trying to hang on struggling and if that drops i mean it's very possible that eth drops right after but um we'll see what happens Uh, 
what did my entry end up being? 38.10.01. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Yo, welcome back. Just doing, getting our degen on here. Oh, nice. Bitcoin's holding that box so far. Come on, Biddy. Keep my position alive. Now I'm just going to be bouncing back and forth between these two. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to look at other coins for a little bit here, guys. <laughs> going to have to babysit if I'm in two positions here. I don't know if I'll hold this one open for very long. Actually, we're just going to see what the structure does. It would be nice if... Uh, it would be really nice if we end up closing a higher high here and then closing another higher high quickly. Then I could update my stop loss into a profit quite quickly. Um, would love to see that. Even right now, if we get a close above this, this would be our confirmed higher low, right? Right now, the confirmed higher low is actually down here. Um, I'm just playing it with a real tight invalidation. Well, actually, my stop is uh, below that. It's at uh, 38.04.20 is my stop loss. Um, but I'm more so looking at this order block holding. And if not, eh, whatever. Just a little guy. Sold a lot of your spot waiting to re-enter. That's, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said earlier, we are trading at resistance on the weekly time frame. Uh, typically speaking, you want to, you know, sell at resistance, buy at support. The only thing is we've been consolidating not like, well, basically not only at all time highs, but even above all time highs a little bit. I really think it's only a matter of time until shit gets wild. I mean, look what happened last time, right? I, I very much remember this when uh, last market cycle, when a lot of influencers started calling for, oh, this is the end for, you know, uh, we're going to see our big, crea uh, big pullback because we're trading at all-time highs and it was getting, uh, you know, trading into resistance, struggling a little bit. It's not breaking out immediately, so people naturally got very bearish and then we just blasted the fuck off um so just something to consider there um well like i said if if we get a weekly close above 71.5 i'm gonna be quite bullish and even if we do pull back at that point you know it would absolutely make sense that we could pull back a little bit um but i'll still be insanely bullish basically this will be our our higher low at that point Um, yeah, who else is in positions? I know we had just talked about a couple, but, um, anyone take these trades? <laughs> I guess this one was technically right before the stream, but, um, <clears throat> um, I don't know if any of you guys will remember this, but I called out Solana for this Stuber Fib pullback. Oh, this was... Well, back in April, I guess, I was looking for that pullback. I know I had mentioned it in the pro signals at one point. Um, that played out absolutely perfectly. And that's, again, just looking at one of those. Uh, this is on the hourly chart. I know I don't normally look at the hourly, um, but this was a spot by not a leverage position for me. So, um, yeah, basically looking at the same sort of structure I was just looking at on Bitcoin. We had this low slightly lower low lower high lower low lower high that's the green line there that's the bullish break of structure there and that's where i just um, again started pulling the fibonacci from our low chasing the price we got up here pull back look what happens boom seven eight six eight eight six pocket absolute bottom 
So even if you're not trading the five minute like a total degen like myself, um, still very valid strategies as far as, uh, you know, longer time frame, uh, spot accumulation, stuff like that, right? Oh, come on, Biddy. Hold that box. Ethereum's not struggling. Come on. Um, oh yeah yeah that's exactly it right if you see that structure break you can always uh buy your spot positions back absolutely just can yeah like you said just consider it a little bit of loss out of your profits buy back in whatever never sold doge in from seven cents nice i remember buying doge i can't remember if it was five or six cents it was somewhere in there but i i paper hands the shit out of that <laughs> uh chaos on uh bitcoin and ethereum here i am trading with leverage on bitcoin this is actually a 50x long from back here and with Ethereum, I'm 25x long. Um, so basically, market. I, I don't actually use market orders. I use limit orders like market. Um, unless I do have an exact level, like when I'm looking for Stuber Fibs, yes, I'll just use limit to hit those. Um, but if I want to be in a position now, because let's say, you know, let's say we were looking for a close above this guy here. And let's say we got that close here. Maybe we don't get some sort of a pullback, right? So maybe I want to get into a position at that point. I would just set a limit order a little bit higher just to make sure that I get in right now. But also that if there is some sort of weird slippage that I don't accidentally buy in way up here, right? Um, <clears throat> so I use limit just a little bit higher than what the price is so that it gets me in immediately like a market order. But yeah, there's a limit to how much slippage I'm going to allow for. I don't know if that makes a difference with fees or not, to be honest. I assume it doesn't make a difference. Um, I don't know how many of you guys were around when, uh, what was it? bitmex was one of the i think pretty much the most popular leverage trading exchange and there was always server issues and man the crazy slippage that would happen is sometimes it'd be like oh i'm, I'm setting a um a trigger order to get into a momentum long if this pattern breaks out kind of a thing and i remember so many times it was like oh man that played out perfectly i'm gonna be in such a nice position go and check my position and the price is no like my entry is nowhere near where i had the uh, the order just because slippage happened and you don't see that as much anymore but wasn't it not long ago i, I can't remember was that on kraken or i can't remember what exchange where actually it was bitmex wasn't it that the price dropped to like seven thousand or something for a second <laughs> yeah, BitMEX was insane. But you know what? That was the first place I was able to trade leverage. And I was like, oh, this app kicks ass. Even though it had its issues, it was a very cool change to how I looked at trading, I guess. Yeah, there was a DGen chat. Yeah, first place that had 100x trading, all that good stuff. Um, 100x trading with a bunch of slippage, just the best. <laughs> oh, nice. That box still trying to hold. Come on, Biddy. Um, just while we let things do things for a few minutes. Actually, uh, one thing that I want to do, you guys... Uh, something that I do quite often is after I enter a position based on a, 
on whatever time frame chart. So right now I'm on a five minute chart with that ETH trade. Uh, when I'm looking, basically once I'm in a position, I look for reasons to get out. At this time, I'm totally comfortable with taking a loss if we do lose these levels. Um, but as we go, if I want to start locking in profits, I'll actually time down a little bit. So I'll just check the three minute, for example. And um, that's where I can start watching, uh, you know, more recent boxes even just to tighten things up a little bit. If we start setting structure on the three minute uh, quicker than the five minute, for example, I'll just look to close a position early. Just a way that I can kind of get out of positions uh, quicker. But so far this is playing out here. Um, God damn it, Biddy. <laughs> what is that stop loss? I guess if my Biddy gets stopped, um, it's a 6.9, 6.92% profit if I get stopped out at the red line there. Um, ETH currently in a 2.83% profit. Ooh. You know, just so I remind myself, I might draw a bigger Stuber Fib here and just chase the price throughout the evening. If we end up seeing some sort of a pullback, I wouldn't mind taking a stab at some longs if we came back to a Stuber Fib. Um, once in a while, I look at some oscillators. Um, honestly, I just find that price structure is so much more important than anything. Um, like I do have this stable coin indicator down here. Actually, usually I also, I don't know, I must have accidentally turned it off, but usually I have the oscillator collection up too. I do like that we have this green money flow cloud here. We did get that red dot might be a bit of a bearish sign, but eh, I don't know. doesn't look so bad to me yet. As far of a, as a stewer fib, I'm actually going to get rid of a couple of these boxes here just to clean things up a little bit. But as far as an actual stuber fib on <laughs> this little trend right here, uh, I don't know if it'll play out, but here we have our high higher high whatever the lowest point between the two would be that this is basically how i would go and pull a stuber fib so actually my stop loss is right in the stuber fib so i would actually consider re-entering if it gets hit i more so just have it ah yeah maybe i should drop that a little bit Eh, whatever. I'll lock in profits if that's hit. Um, hopefully if we do drop, we just get a bounce right off the 786. Um, if not, then I'll end up getting stopped out in a profit anyways and whatever. I just want to secure a little pay here. Um... see right now is one of those times where if we get this candle closing above where we had this little this little little red block here if we close above that that's where i'm considering this a new higher low right because technically we've already this was our high higher high if we can now close a even higher high that's the lowest point between the two right but only if we get that close above. And if we do, I'm gonna bump up my stop loss to, the entry's 38.10. Let's 
just check something here. If we end up getting a close above, I'm going to update my stop loss to 38, 12, and 30 cents. Which would only be a 1.5% profit if it got hit. But whatever, it's protecting myself. That would cover my fees, that sort of thing. Um, that's only if we get that close in the next two minutes. Oh yeah, the longer time frames for so many things just look juicy these days. Actually, I don't know how many of you guys were in my stream last week, but this was one that we were talking about, Nub. Um, we were actually testing this old resistance line, this yellow line. I had pointed out we had three exact touch points. We came back down. We were retesting it at the time. I think it was at like, what, 3.6 cents or something at the time. Yeah, I think we were right about here. And uh, I ended up loading up on that a little bit. So I think I'm going to sell a little bit here soon. Kind of want to see what this ne what this four hour candle closes like if it closes where it is right now. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to consider selling some just because you know what? It isn't a good profit uh, from where we got in. Where was it right around here? We are sitting at a, like a 45 percent profit. Um, so I'd consider selling a quarter of it or so just to protect myself a little bit and whatnot. Um, I, I do expect that you know if bitcoin goes nuts i don't see why meme coins would be any different and this is one of those more popular uh, cat ones or whatever it's over a 50 million dollar market cap so it's not one of those random ones that's you know lasts for a couple hours and then rugs uh, it's actually been around so um yeah i'll definitely be holding on to some of it but i might just reduce my exposure a little bit since that was a nice little pump uh, Peng has still Peng has been doing beautiful as well. Um, basically holding at support nicely. If this were kind of the order block we were looking at there before we broke out here, um, you can see we actually ended up dropping down below it, but then we reclaimed it. So as long as we can hold above this yellow box, I think it's looking pretty good. Um, I have taken, I, I think I've sold about a third of my Peng position. But um, still holding some, just in case this yellow box ends up holding again. Um, Rocky, I know we've talked about this one in the past. Um, looking a little bit weak right now, but technically something that I've talked about this one in the past is I was mentioning looking for that shift in indicators, right? Because this only has a couple million dollar market cap or something. One of those memers that's, you know, it's obviously high risk, but it has been around for a while. I know a lot of people in the group um, are actually invested in this one. Um, if I just want to go to the four hour, turn off a couple indicators here. And notice I basically was looking at something similar, right? We had our support uh, back here we ended up losing it briefly look what happens when we reclaimed it here um, just in the last week or so I think it actually ended up doing a 2 or a 3x I thought it was more than well either way it doubled pretty quickly there it is pulling back a little bit, but what I do like is on the four hour here, if I turn the trend dynamic trend collection back on, um, you can see that we have W's trending to the upside. I was talking about that earlier um, as well. Oh yeah, this is the four hour. Um, as well, we do have this buy trend holding right now. We're trading at support right now, basically. Um, so W is trending to the upside and buy signals also trending to the upside. Um, so that is absolutely beautiful. If I turn off the indicators, actually core trend as well. Uh, it's starting to flip a little more neutral, but we do still have support from this as well. Um, what else? What else? Yeah, I don't know. That's just one of those low market cap, high risk, but 
I mean, potential upside, right? It just kind of looks like we're forming one of those rounding bottoms. So that looks pretty juicy to me as well. Um, what else? What else? Oh, it just couldn't quite close above that, hey? <laughs> now I got to wait another whole two and a half minutes here. Ridiculous. Uh, what's BTC doing? Oh, BTC is still... <laughs> All right, we're kind of stuck, stuck in a little range with both of these positions here. I'm actually going to make that yellow just to match the... Nice, nice. Here we go. Let's go, Biddy. Yes, let's do it. Come on, ETH. Don't be a bitch. I'm really just updating this totally premature here because uh, we haven't actually set this as an order block. It's just what I'm looking for ahead of time, basically. Actually, what I can do, let's move it up to where it should actually be. So basically just choosing this whole red candle here before we reversed and broke this structure, right? But yeah, it might actually get a full pullback. Uh, something to watch for, actually, if nobody's in a position, just not financial advice, but uh, an interesting position could be one like that, right? Stuber Fib setup down here. A little bit risky because we technically never closed above this wick here. The closes are higher than these closes, um, but it is just a little bit messy, so something to be a little bit cautious of there. If considering a position, but a little bit uh, feeling like it might be a bit risky on something like that, maybe a smaller position kind of a thing, right? Just because there's something working against you, just taking that risk into consideration and downsizing a little bit. Oh, actually, another indicator I wanted to check out was the liquidations. Because uh, often the price will get drawn to those liquidation levels, right? <laughs> In fact, look at these ones that would have got just hit and then reversed, right? These brown ones and gold ones here, that's the higher leverage ones. You can see my legend in the bottom right corner here. Um, and when I turn wicks back on, you can see that this liquidity got eaten up by the bigger players. Um, basically stopped out, liquidated people on high leverage, and then reversed, right? Um, same thing happened right here. Down here, we also grabbed this liquidity. So uh, I, I've been really liking that as far as uh, just looking for potential magnet zones kind of a thing. You know, if we end up pumping, well, let's just say we end up losing support here. Um, definitely consider the possibilities that we drop down towards these levels or even further. Actually, I'm curious. Where would my 115 fib land? <laughs> so my invalidation zone is right around both these liquidity levels, right? So that's something I'd take into consideration as well. When I do look for these invalidation fibs, uh, generally I have the 115. That's just a ballpark. And then I look for other reasons to loosen it up a little. Uh, I'm never tighter than that. Uh, when I'm looking at that kind of a setup, I usually have a little extra wiggle room. And this would be one of those reasons is that there's that liquidity down there that may get grabbed. So if, uh, you know, if we start trending down a little bit, I'd even consider, you know, waiting for a reaction at these levels or actually getting down here and getting, you know, a much tighter or just an even better entry, right? Uh, ETH five minute. Uh, divergence, bearish divergence. Yeah. 
I'm considering just bailing on that position. Ah, fuck it. We'll leave it. <laughs> Gotta live dangerously on this one. Oh, where's my dab pen? That should be making the decisions for me. <laughs> um, usually I'm trading on Bing X. Actually, below in my videos, I do have a referral link if anybody needs a place to trade. But I believe uh, if you want access to MDX's bot and stuff like that, I think you need to use his link. Uh, but that's where I do most of my trading anyways. I feel like it's only a matter of time until I get hit with KYC by them. And when that happens, I'll either have to figure something else out or go elsewhere, maybe trade more on decentralized exchanges. Like I know uh, MDX has uh, the Alpha Exchange. I've used that a couple of times, so that's always an option if you're having uh, issues with KYC and stuff like that. Yeah, digital ID, that's always an option. I've heard that some exchanges are starting to have issues with that as well. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Mm. But, I mean, that's just the part of playing the crypto game, right? <laughs> I mean, we're always getting bounced around a little bit. Yeah, pulling right back into this pocket here. Um, what was that Stuber Fib at? Again, this one is a little bit messy because we have the wicks here. Might be more of a swing fail here. Might have had a short opportunity. But again, I'm just, I'm not really looking at shorts as much right now. T A I or T I A? Do you mean Tia? Flow four hour. Um, here, flow, USDT, um, MEXC, you say? All of those ones you just requested, I assume? I'll take a quick peek, sure. Um, all right, what can we see as far as market structure? I see a couple beautiful Stuber fibs, actually, but uh, they've already played out, obviously. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is a prime example of a beautiful setup on a four-hour chart and how well it would have played out. But obviously, Bitcoin had this low. We ended up setting a much lower low. That means our confirmed lower high was this level. Or actually, no, sorry, I'm looking at that wrong. We would need to take the wicks off, I think. And then we'd actually have this breakdown here. Well, yeah, actually, this isn't a perfect Stuber setup. Uh, it is still the same fib pocket, I can tell you just from looking at it. Um, but as far as me looking for a structure break first, uh, doesn't actually have what I typically look for. Um, but that being said, look at this. I can, I mean, I can tell you clear as day. We pull our fib to where we topped out in the range, and look at that. So even though it's not a Stuber setup, it's still that fib pocket um, doing what it does, right? TP1, TP1, TP2. Um, just beautiful. Uh, as it stands right now, I don't really see that much of a reason to be bearish other than on the very immediate swing here. We lost this support and flipped it into resistance here. Something to consider there. We might pull back a little bit. 
Um, I think it'll largely depend on what happens with Bitcoin here. Um, let's look for random trends. See if I can find a pattern of some kind. I feel like there's some sort of a bull flag in here. Or not a bull flag. Uh, and also not a bear flag, uh, just a pennant in general. Again, I like exact touch points personally. Uh, everybody maps things out differently. But um, either way, I would like to see another touch point. Which, whichever trend line breaks here first, I would like to see another uh, touch point first. Because right now we just have one touch point, two touch points. And I'm mm -hmm. going to consider these one touch point, two touch points. So if we're going to break to the downside with this, I would like to see a third touch point retest. If we're going to break to the upside, I would like to see a third and then break and retest. Um, that's personally how I like to look for um, chart patterns. But again, everyone has their own strategies and that sort of thing. Um, what about a bigger time frame? Let's look at it daily. How are things looking? I mean, you can tell that it's trading at a nice big support level. Uh, actually trading right above it. So I would love to see this gain momentum again. Um, technically in a bit of a downtrend si still since breaking this, but that's a daily. I mean, actually, doesn't that look like uh, a couple Bitcoin bear markets ago? That's just, uh, this might give some people PTSD here, but a descending triangle there. Yeah, 2017, that was, uh, what was it, December 18th or something like that? I can't remember. All I know is I got involved in the space about three days before that. So <laughs> if anybody bought the bull market high, uh, don't feel bad. That happens to most of us. You get in when the market's sexy, not when it's smart too, right? But those of us who stick around, we learn from our mistakes, hopefully. Um... Sorry to get sidetracked there, but that's what I thought on uh, the daily chart there. Yeah, still kind of holding this downtrend. Um, you know, even from here, we had this little bit of support here. We ended up dropping it, flipped it into resistance. Uh, so definitely something to consider there. Um, I, I think it's still in a good position because, you know, we did technically break this high, obviously. But it's just possible that we pull back a little bit. You know, potential target would be look for a Fibonacci, something like that, if you're lucky enough to get it. Actually, lines up with that upward sloping trend line too, right? Something to watch for, anyways. Um, uh, TAI USDT, and that is also Mexi. Um. Kind of same thing here, right? Is uh, oh, this is the hourly chart. So we do have a nice bullish uh, break above this high here. Uh, just understand that e even though it, I'm saying that that structure is bullish, we could still see some sort of a pullback, right? Typically speaking, I like to see those pullbacks. So seven eight six eight eight six doesn't always happen. Obviously, you could miss that. Um, just I'm a big believer in waiting for the pullback rather than FOMOing in to a breakout kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, that's looking decent on the hourly. What else can we find? Um, let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, there's some big wicks. This must be a fairly low volume kind of a thing. These coins scare me. If this is leverage, uh, be very careful. I'm terrified of trading altcoins with leverage because, and specifically on Mexi. And I don't mean to talk shit because I'm actually used to uh, promote their links as well. Like I'm a partner with them and Bing X. Uh, I used to use Mexi religiously, um, but I've had a few times where I was trading with leverage on altcoins. And one time in, in uh, that comes to mind, I know some of you guys have heard this before. But uh, I was trading at like 25x leverage on some random altcoin. I had my stop loss in a 5% profit and I got liquidated. I never got stopped out. I got liquidated on that trade. Um, but yeah, as far as spot, um, yeah, there's obviously big moves to be made. 
on these coins that get these big spikes here. And it is nice that, you know, we did break that structure there. We still obviously trading at some important resistance levels. Like we've seen a lot of trading at these levels. Oh, this is just such a weird chart. Um, all right, let's get back to these guys here. Actually, so uh, even though it happened while we weren't looking here, technically speaking, a Stuber Fib did play out. It would have hit TP1 already though, right? Entry 1, Entry 2, TP1. So that's obviously a very small range, but that's where that Fib is pulled from, right? You don't see it unless you have the wicks on, obviously. Um, and let's bring this box back up here. Just because that's... I really want to see us find support here and see this position do something cool. <laughs> Biddy's still hanging on for me. <laughs> Front running the 786. Uh, there we go. Link? Let's check out Link. I know Link was looking beautiful. Cause I think it was you who pointed out Link to me one time. Um, naturally, I never did anything about it. But I do recall it being mentioned. Okay, so really zooming into this structure here. Let's just say we ended up losing that. I'm actually going to make this red for bearish. Uh, lost that. So low, lower low. We had that little bounce and technically another lower low. So I, this is one of those times where it's micro analyzing but looking for a very tight invalidation. Um, if we end up getting a uh, candle body close above this high here actually i'd say even above that um that's where we can now consider this our lower high of the trend just because we had that tight uh, kind of like what i was looking at in the opposite direction on the weekly chart right we have that break in structure but now we have another break so um at this point this is still technically this is the resistance that you'd want to see hold basically for a bearish move but if that can get closed above, then that kind of breaks the structure of this little downtrend then. Um, that's really zooming in. That's that's looking at swing by swing, guys. That's, that's not looking at the overall picture. That's like um, very reactive, like I was talking about earlier. That's reactive trading. That is playing uh, basically the exact trend reversal kind of a thing. Um, what's the one hour looking like? So we have the closes down here, then the closes down here. So that's our lower low. I would say actually move this up a little bit. I'd like to see the hourly close above that. It does look like it's trying to, right? Like the thing is, um, like it's getting tighter consolidation. It looks like, like the sell pressure is easing off a little bit. Let's see what some indicators are saying here. Uh, we still do have the sell say, ooh. That's that's looking rough. I don't like that the sell signal on the trend collection is lining up with that resistance I just made. Um, something to consider there is all. Um, So yeah, this is one of those times uh, uh, there would have been a juicy short opportunity here. I don't know if that's quite a Stuber Fib, but check this out. Uh, just this uptrend that we had, um, we had high, higher high, higher low, higher high, well, low stayed about the same, higher high, higher low. And look what happens after we drop that. Yes, we get a bounce, but we obviously don't break that structure, right? Um, 
that was obviously a bit of a reversal there and we came very close to the 786 it actually got front run a little bit but just that just goes to show how basic charting goes right guys um like i like we kind of went over earlier i'm not using any fancy indicators don't get me wrong i love these indicators uh the indicators that we use in this group um they are the only indicators i use at this point and like i said like i was showing earlier i use them for looking for confirmations and that sort of thing um but at the end of the day just having a real strong grasp of how market structure changes is so much more valuable than relying on indicators um, the indicators I, I like finding those trade setups based on chart structure and i'm looking at indicators for that confluence right um falling wedge yes i absolutely i would say there is a bit of a falling wedge here as well uh, this is the one hour, right? Yeah. I, again, I personally like Wix, but yeah, man, that's uh, respected quite well. If we look at, ooh, see, it, it could actually, uh, something to consider. Is we could technically be doing one of those. I, I don't know. I personally think it's going to be more something like this i assume that's kind of what you're seeing maybe you're using candle bodies or something or just the average more so i like to use exact touch points but something like that yeah absolutely and if some sort of a downtrend breaks uh same with that horizontal level right as soon as that structure breaks um then i th i think uh link looks like a good buy eventually like it's just it's one of those strong projects that always seems to get good momentum it also seems like an early mover a lot of the times. I remember that from last market cycle, actually. I, I recall Link being one of the first movers. No, ETH. Come on, do something cool. <laughs> Bitcoin's trying to be cool. Um, what else, Sledgies? What else? Um, anyone else? trade what kind of time frames do you guys typically trade both spot and with leverage like do you guys prefer one way or the other like generally when i'm trading spot i'm looking more at the one hour the four hour and uh when i'm trading leverage i'm looking at like three minute five minute kind of a thing spot four hour one hour no leverage for you no leverage that's probably a smart choice honestly um, i don't know how long you've been in the markets there but um i i know i talk about this pretty much every stream as well how i actually learned to trade and as i mentioned um i got into the market right about here <laughs> if i were to take a guess at exactly where it was somewhere in there um, but what I did is I never even knew leverage trading was a thing in crypto back then. I never learned that until about here when I saw this descending triangle. All I knew is that I, I understood charts well enough that I knew I wanted to short if this breaks. And that was still probably one of the best trades of my life. Um, one of my first shorts ever, I think. Um, but what I did before that is I just learned how to... Um, coin collect basically looking at altcoins i was interested in holding even though they took a shit kicking naturally through a bear market um it, it was just good to detach from that dollar amount right i just started small anyways um but just disconnecting from that dollar value and just trying to collect coins for free it was actually two of my buddies got me doing that and showed me the ways so if you guys are listening to this thanks boys <laughs> um 
so yeah honestly that's how i learned how to trade kept leverage out of it i just did the spot trading more so trying to time the drops to collect more coins for free rather than focusing so much on the dollar amount Ooh, bitcoin's bumping nicely uh chaos says leverage five to 15 minutes yeah, I used to always trade the 15 minute. I got a little more impatient and wanted to go a little more degen, so I went more five minute. Uh, now the three minute a little bit. I find after that, like the one minute and stuff, I don't know. I find it, it's so easy to miss your entry. You have to be so on the ball um, when you're trading the one minute or <laughs> hell for a while. I was trying the 15 second and stuff like that. Um, you just have to be so fast at everything. And that's one thing too, guys, when I'm trading the three minute and the five minute, even being able to react is huge. Uh, if you're slow at setting orders, the, the shorter time frames get quite dangerous because you miss your entries or your take profits very quickly. Um, like even that little Stuber fib, that was how beautiful look at us hold this box. Um, that little Stuber fib that I showed, um, with how quick this would have happened right if you did enter there looking for tp1 there look how fast that happened that was all within one five minute candle um so trading shorter time frames i mean you can miss things very easily um stx i'll check out stx uh is what exchange and time frame you guys uh when you if you request an altcoin, just let me know what exchange and what time frame, just so we're looking at kind of the same thing. I'll probably wrap up in the next 10 minutes or so here. But we can hammer out a few yet. Babysit these trades a little more. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, STX on Binance. Oh, all good. Holy, that's quite the little run it's just had, hey? Oh, yeah, close, uh, 30%, 35%, beautiful. Um, something that I like here is I can see already that, you know, we broke some serious structure. Ooh, that's, that's nice. Um, just looking at this, here we had our low. And notice that these levels are a little bit lower. So there's our lower low. That's our lower high. Uh, from here, our next lower low is until down here, right? Uh, highest point between those two, right here. So that was our lower high. And look at that. We came, <laughs> would you just look at it? We came back, we tested it, we broke out, we came back, we're testing it again. Um, that's beautiful to see, I'm not going to lie. Even as far as like, you know, this was the range high, then we get a higher high, higher low. So basically, as long as we stay above this range here, I'd say it's in a healthy trend there. That's the one hour. We bought it around two. Oh, nice. You caught that nice whole breakout. Hey, hell yeah. I. Uh, Looks like it's trying to find support here. I mean, yeah, like I said, if it loses this range here, then um, we're obviously going to have to reassess. But uh, I'd even say if we start closing candle bodies below that level, uh, it might be it would be looking a little bit weak to me, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, as long as we hold above this range here, then I think it's uh, it's in pretty good shape. Um. <clears throat> yeah, spot six years on and off nice nice um yeah absolutely for most people spot trading 100 percent is the only way to make money not lose uh agreed generally speaking people are better at investing than trading um Trading takes a certain level of ass kicking, <laughs> or sorry, getting your ass kicked more so, and uh, basically putting in a lot of effort. Um, 
a lot of people, most people get into trading because they think it's going to be easy money. But what most of us learn pretty quickly is it's not so fucking easy. In fact, it's one of the harder things that you can do. There's a reason why not many people are profitable at it. But if you're more into the investing or spot trading side of things, it's a lot easier to keep your emotions at bay. And that's where also having an understanding of chart analysis, uh, uh, structure levels and Fibonacci's and that sort of thing, you can really get those juicy entries as long as you have the patience to go with it. Um, Bell, I can check out Bell. Bell, four hour... Binance, does this look right? <clears throat> this one, holy, that was quite the pump and dump it had. Um, one thing to consider, this is a little bit messy to me just because I really like Generally speaking, I like closes above wicks and stuff, and quite often wicks like to fill um, and just basically fill and reverse because quite often something like this will just be um, predicting where the price or, um, yeah, basically predicting where the price is going to end up. And you can see that right now we're kind of starting to close candle bodies around here. Um, that being said, if you just look at candle bodies and I don't know what the volume or anything like that is on this thing, but if you're just looking at candle bodies, I mean, we have been staircasing higher. So I'd say as long as we can kind of hold above this range, I'd actually say, um, let's just make some sort of an order block here. I'd say as long as we don't close a candle body below that level there, I think we're in decent shape. Um, mm -hmm just looking let's just see if we can find any random trend lines or anything maybe look for a diagonal here once in a while i don't mind looking at those maybe something like so uh you know if you end up getting some sort of a pullback um, i would love this is one of those opportunities where if we came back to this trend line not saying we have to and also not going to be setting any blind orders at it or anything like that especially with leverage However, uh, what I love doing is when I'm looking at a longer time frame like this, like a four hour, and then let's say I, I'm personally not really watching this coin, but if I was, I'd be looking at add an alert there and just so that it lets me know so I can watch what kind of a reaction we get at those levels. And that's where I'd like to zoom into, let's say the five minute. And all of a sudden we, let's just say we, this is all theoretical, obviously, but let's say we do end up dumping to the downside, do some sort of a five minute wick candle bodies closing back above this level. That's more so the reaction I'm looking at when I'm, I, I want to see or take an entry on it. I'm not just going to blindly set an order here because I don't know where I'd have my stop loss, honestly. I mean, yeah, probably somewhere down here, but I'd rather see the more recent price action. So that's where I'd be waiting to see what happens if that level is uh, tested. So even when I'm looking at longer time frames, uh, sometimes I like to uh, zoom in when I'm looking for the actual entry, especially if I'm using leverage, right? Just to try and minimize the potential downside. Um, but yeah, as far as candle bodies, it does look like it's staircasing up nicely. Um, even this level back here, uh, that's actually interesting because um, let's just say, well, even if we counted this as our, you know, the majority of the low kind of a thing, and then our lower low, lower high, uh, that's basically where we're consolidating on top of right now. So there's a few nice things going for this one. Uh, I want to zoom in a little, actually, let's check some indicators. Uh, we also have, oh, that is, that's nice. I love seeing that is these W's trending to the upside, make them yellow. So the color matches, um, as well, these buy signals are trending to the upside, and we still have that buy trend support. And it's interesting that the, uh, I don't know if you'd call this a recommended stop loss or trailing stop loss, whatever, it actually lines up quite close with my diagonal trend line currently, so nice to have. And as well, this, uh, this support box that I mapped out. So it's all very close to this area here. Um, so there's a lot of confluence saying that if we do come down, at least there's some support, right?
looking for 147 on this guy um 147 that would be somewhere up here okay so yeah i see what you're looking at here oops so yeah you're thinking coming up towards kind of some of this area up here And that's that's the nice thing to you guys is uh like look at all of this level if we, if this thing does break to the upside actually the more I zoom out the more beautiful this looks to be honest uh, just look at this gap none of this has been tested yet um, love to see that because generally speaking I mean yes we have this resistance level you know that I was talking about here it's also very close to where we wicked to there. Um, there's just kind of a lot of resistance right there. I shouldn't even say a lot, just there's obviously some significant resistance at this level. If we break out from there, there's really nothing stopping us until this yellow box here. That's where you get those nice, quick, juicy moves, right? Because there's not structure all over the place here with a bunch of levels where it's going to, you know, chop around at or anything like that. Um, generally speaking, you know, if you dump to the downside that aggressively, you know, when you get back into the range, that range is obviously uh, basically an empty zone, right? Yeah, that's, I like that. Core trend is trying to flip more so neutral here, but you can see it just keeps flipping green, gray, barely any red in there. So more so providing support more recently. Does look like it's trying to push the price up. I like it. I like it. Um, oh God, this thing just can't make up its mind here. <laughs> Bitcoin's really trying to hold that box. <clears throat> I'd actually be looking more so somewhere in there. If we start closing below that, I'll probably end up closing my position if it hasn't been stopped out yet. Um, if we break above this, I'll probably end up Eh, no, I'll just leave my stop loss for now. It's in a profit. I'll just leave it. Um, Ethereum. Oh, yeah, here we go. This box, these two boxes that I mapped out at the start of this stream are really trying to hold something here. Let me get rid of that. Just clean it up a little bit. Actually, no. Rather than the yellow, let's throw the Stuber fit back on. <laughs> if you really got your DGen on, look at all these opportunities. Look how many times we tested this Fib Pocket and tested TP1. <laughs> if I was a bot, I would be having a heyday with that. I really want to figure out how to get this uh, trading strategy automated so that it would just take every single one. I'd be really curious to see how it would go if it was less picky and just picked every single one. <laughs> um, you think some of these alts like Elgo, Gala will ever climb back up? They seem to have a lot of good potential, but just seem so stagnant. Um, I haven't looked at those in a long time. I know I was looking at Gala a little bit back in the day. Um, Elgo... Oh, Algorand. Yeah, I remember this one now. Um, I mean, technically, it looks like it's at a nice support level, right? Well, not at it, but this whole kind of level of support is where we're trading on top of now, kind of. Uh, we had this whole range here, tested into it a couple times, testing the top of it. Um, obviously where we saw a lot of buyers step in to push us up to these levels. So, I mean, technically we are fairly close to support still. It's not looking so bad, but I, I see what you mean. It is looking a little, 
a little stag. Let's uh, zoom in a little mm -hmm. bit more. See if I can force any trend lines here. <laughs> Even something like this. First, I would still like to see that third touch and then break, retest, and go. Um, that would be my ideal situation. Just for my own curiosity. Yeah, classic. Look at that. It's crazy how much the price loves to pull back to that fib pocket. Uh, there's a reason I don't shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> Excuse my language. Um, yeah, will it ever come back? Um, oh, God. Hey, that looks a lot like Rocky's chart. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's all it's always possible. I know nothing of the project, to be honest. Um I couldn't tell you whether or not this is ever gonna recover. But um uh, I don't know. The chart kinda looks like it's doing what a lot of things do after a big pump and dump market cycle kind of a thing. They come back, they flatline, and then all of a sudden you know, it's hard to say what's gonna happen to altcoins when Bitcoin does finally decide to break out, right? Because uh, there's a couple different scenarios that could happen is one when Bitcoin closes above this uh, 71 five uh, you know there's a good chance that here's my two potential scenarios uh, one is that altcoins also explode because the market just goes euphoric and everything just blasts off together uh, because generally speaking, if Bitcoin's doing good, then altcoins are doing better. If Bitcoin's doing bad, altcoins are getting hammered on. Um, but there is sometimes, and I feel like it's on the big uh, cycle shifts or the big cycle changes or whatever. And I personally think that's going to be if we end up getting that breakout. Uh, blue sky breakout, price discovery, whatever you want to call it. I think that a lot of eyes are just going to be focused on bitcoin at that point so i don't i'm not so sure altcoins will follow right out right out of the gate uh, but if bitcoin does end up you know doing something like this and then it actually pauses and forms some kind of a consolidation this is where i want to be loading up on altcoins as soon as basically bitcoin has its massive breakout uh, as soon as it calms its titties, that's when I want to get involved in altcoins as heavily as I can, basically. That's just how I'm looking at it, because at that point, that's when, okay, you know, Bitcoin calmed down. Um, it's getting a little boring again, whatever. Um, but hey, we've all made a bunch of money. We're going to be feeling good. We're going to be getting greedy. We're going to be looking for the higher risk plays. We're going to be just willing to diversify more so. Um, so that's when, as soon as the market pauses, everyone's going to realize, hey, there's something else I could be doing, basically. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's really, we're going to see, basically, as soon as Bitcoin does its thing, if all of a sudden, you know, we start taking out some of these, like, let's say that sort of a range high, if we break out of that, yeah, I think absolutely it's possible that it goes absolutely silly. But, I mean, it all depends what the chart does at that point, right? Have to see when structure ends up ch uh, changing again. Maybe we get something like this, and all of a sudden we lose that structure again right away. And, well, maybe that's, that's all we get this time, or maybe it's just a correction before we break back to the upside, whatever. Uh, we just got to play the chart as it comes. But, yeah, right now I would be saying if it breaks above this, what is that, 31.35 cents, um, I think at that point it would be a green light to break the hell out. Um, what else was I going to look at? Gala. Uh, basically same opinion. Um How is it looking right now? This is the daily chart. And kind of this whole support level from before we took off. I mean, we're still trying to hold that level as support. Um, 
this is kind of where we ended up uh, where the sell-off got cut short and ended up blasting us through this resistance here. Um, we kind of lost it, regain it, reclaiming it. I, I would actually open that up a little bit. That's kind of micro-analyzing there. I'd be more so looking at something like that. And you can see all the candle bodies are actually holding that. So that's not looking so bad. Again, know nothing about it. Couldn't tell you what's going to happen for sure. Um, but a lot of this is very aggressive price action, right? So again, if we end up breaking some of these resistance levels, uh, there's not much standing in the way from quite large moves, right? <clears throat> um, Dusk, I'll check out Dusk. That might be the last one. Um, again, know nothing about it. Not a fundamental guy. <laughs> um, well, I mean, just looking at it, how I look at typical ranges, you can see we got that breakout, pull a tuber fib. We always, oh, we actually dropped below the 886, but you can see we spent some time in that fib pocket, finding that 786 uh, fib support again. Um, yeah, just going to have to basically play it as it comes, but I would say the fact that we're holding this support down here is nice. This is basically where we found support before blasting off up here um, and again, testing it again. So as long as we hold that level, I think we're in okay shape there. Uh, indicators, we just got a higher buy signal recently as well. W starting trending to the upside again. Um, yeah, there's some nice signs there. On That's on the daily chart, so it would obviously take a while to play out, but nice to see. Same thing, four hour. Uh, we don't have the buy signals lining up, but we do have upward trending Ws, right? Again, guys, this is just why I love to look for uh, these indicators trending, right? As soon as we have these higher Ws, this is actually one of the first strategies I came up with with these indicators. Um, higher trending Ws on the top, higher buy, higher uh, bullish reversal warning right here. Look at that beautiful entry. So it's nice to see. And again, right, they kept trending to the upside, as did this one, just another beautiful buy entry. Um, yeah, that doesn't look so bad on the four hour to me. Um, what is everything else saying? Trend collection, having a hard time holding that. Core trend trying to flip to support right now again, it looks like. Um, if I were to pull a fib, basically from where we found that bottom with that reversal warning to where we are, we're getting very close to a 786 there. Um, and as well, just where we ended up getting our last little uh, rejection there we're kind of finding support right on that level now so nice to see there in my opinion on the four hour oh are we are we out nope not quite i don't like the look of that though the fact that we lost this structure and whatnot Feeling a lot better about my Bitcoin long than my Ethereum one. <laughs> Come on, Biddy. I'd really like to see something like a decent move go here. This is kind of slow going. What was my stop loss on that? Was it hit? No. Yeah, Ethereum's just more more volatile in general. 
especially now with uh, didn't ETFs just get approved with that as well? Um, but yeah, both positions are struggling a little bit at this point, but at least I know this one's going to be a decent profit. And I'm hoping this one is. Realistically, you guys, I probably should have at least taken some off the table when we got back up. Or... Yeah, because I, I think I just... Oh, yeah, I entered here. I probably should have closed, you know, a quarter or half there or whatever and treated it as the scalp that it was. But whatever. We're having fun here, right? Um... But yeah, this Bitcoin one's still looking good. As long as we hold above this yellow line here. Oh yeah, here we go. Love to see a close above this level. Um, yeah, I'm basically just going to um, watch these positions for a few more minutes here. Holy hell, we've been going for over an hour and a half. I should probably wrap things up fairly soon here. <laughs> Hey, and there's still people here. Would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, same with Solana. So much sell pressure since all those meme coins launched. That being said, a lot of the buy pressure on Solana is because of the meme coins, right? Because people are buying Solana just so they can sell it. Um... It's not necessarily people who have been holding Solana forever and are selling it into meme coins. Uh, so it kind of goes a little bit both ways there. China's supposed to letting people trade crypto and there's a crypto velo is possible. Um, I believe I've heard of that one actually. That is one more I'll look at. OKX. Oh, that was a nice rounding bottom. That's you know, like I was talking about earlier with those rounding bottoms. This this looks so much like Rocky's chart. Uh, obviously much different because Rocky's a couple million shitcoin memer. And I have no idea anything about this one. But um, yeah, beautiful rounding bottom there. Just kind of trying to staircase higher. I don't like that we actually closed candle bodies below that. But um, the overall trend is obviously to the upside here. Zoom into the four hour. I'd really like to see us break this. This because the way I'm looking at this is low, lower, low, lower, high. I'd like to see that break. Would a Stuber Fib here have been invalidated yet? Oh, look at that. That's another thing to consider is we did have this range high, higher high, higher low to pull our Fib from. So pulling the Fib from here to here. And we pulled into the Super Fib pocket, never quite hit my invalidation Fib. And we're starting to try and trade to the upside. So nice to see that reaction around that level. Um, what are the indicators saying? Um... W's are still trending to the downside, but you can tell they're getting less aggressive, right? It kind of looks like they're also starting to form a rounding bottom. We also got uh, another buy signal came into play very quickly here. Yes, it is technically trending down, um, but it's just coming into play quicker and quicker. So that's nice. Uh, Core trend has also joined the uh, trend collection indicator and in providing support right around the same level. So just a little added confluence there. Yeah, that's not looking so bad. But again, I would really like to see the break of that yellow line. Basically break above two cents would be ideal. Um, yeah, anyways, guys. Oh yeah, here we go. How's, is E3 covering? Oh God, I guess we'll find out. 
But anyways, guys, I don't want to keep you guys here all night, and I also have some things to do, so I'm going to get going here. Um, you kind of, hopefully you guys found this stream useful. Um, it's kind of cool that we got to take a couple live positions here. I don't know what's going to happen on it yet, to be honest. I Obviously, my Bitcoin one is going to win. It's hard to say what will happen with the ETH trade there. Uh, but yeah, now you guys kind of know my reasoning, why I entered my positions and what I kind of look for, stuff like that. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for everybody who joined me here. I really appreciate having you guys here with me. Uh, it just helps me talk through my own emotions, helps me look at the charts in a more sane manner, <laughs> that sort of thing. So yeah, anyways, legends, I think that's about all I wanted to go over today. So hopefully you found this stream useful. Uh, for those of you watching this on my YouTube channel a little bit later, if you're interested in my favorite indicators, which I've been showing, plus access to the VIP Discord with live streams such as these put on by not only myself, but also a handful of other very knowledgeable traders in the group, there's a 15% discount link down below. I'm personally doing most of my trading on Bing X. Uh, so there's a link down below for that as well, if that's if you need a place to get your DGen on. And with that, I'm out. Stay safe, my friends. Peace.